They called it, it didn't t like, taste like garlicky, but it was really fucking chill. I like that. Brian's ready. I don't remember what it was. I'll have to go look. Fuck, I wish I knew the name of that. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian oh. White. What's yeah, up, brother? Yeah. Excellent microphone choice, by the way. Hello. <laughs> How are you, sir? Good. Can you hear me? We can hear you yep. great. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Nick actually tried to hop in about 40 minutes ago, but I just texted him and said we're ready, so he should be here any minute. I have not heard from Jordan all day, but he's been on the show many, many times, so I'm sure he'll poke his head in. Uh, and then I have not heard from Joey. And Brian's frozen. <laughs> and we, we lost you, Brian. You're, fro right. you're frozen. Here we go. But he'll be he'll be he'll be ready in a second. Okay, I don't know if you heard everything that I just said, but you froze for a second. Oh, I heard yeah. Okay, cool. Um, hell yeah. How's the day, dude? How's life? Good. You got it. You guys, we're Thanks excellent. Thanks for having me. Oh, we, we're we're honored, me, man. Bro. We appreciate it. you. I like this a... little room that you're in. You have is this where where you keep all your instruments right now? Oh, this is my like little. Uh... Uh, like editing suite slash studio slash just my little like man cave in my house. It, Ooh, it looks like some serious busy? some serious camera gear going on yeah. too in the background. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a videographer and stuff. This is pretty much the home for all my stuff. So very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. While we wait for everybody else, I usually don't. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you go. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just gonna say I normally just don't pack anything away just because I usually end up getting it out anyway. So just keep it out always. Got it. Cool. While we're waiting for uh, the rest of the boys to join us, are you down to review a couple bands with us to kind of like stall the time for a second? Yeah, let's do it. So the, these are these are artists of any genre from anywhere in the entire world. Most of the time, we don't know what we're gonna what what it is ahead of time. Oh. There's Nick. Speak of the devil and get y'all up here. Yeah. Nick is here, but his camera is off and his mic is muted. Oh, wait a second. Hello? Dad. Hey, hey, there he is. What's up, Nick? How we doing, sir? <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you for stopping by, That's dude. Cool. We appreciate you. Nick's <laughs> daddy. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> What's up? How are you? So when is the last time you guys have seen each other? Yeah, when's the last time you guys kicked it? Um, man, it's been a minute. Like 2016, I think. Dude, the beard looks good. Hey, you too. Thank you, dude. Thanks, I can finally grow one. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Yo, so Nick, you're you're quite busy lately uh, doing a bunch of recording for a bunch of, uh, of bands that we play on the show here. Uh, specifically, Set It. What was it like to work yeah, with Set It? Uh, I, say that again. I'm sorry, dude. The, I couldn't hear you. Uh, you. You worked with the band called Set It recently. Uh, S E D I T. I did. Yes. What was it like working with Jeff and and uh, and Harry? Uh, they're awesome, man. Super chill guys. Talented dudes. They're they're a blast to work with. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Have Have you guys uh gotten to speak to uh to Joey today or Jordan by, by chance? I haven't got a hold of them today. I just texted Joey. Okay, cool. So we'll see him here in a minute. I, I was just telling Brian, we're going to review a couple bands while we're waiting for everybody else to get in here. We don't know what, it's any genre from anywhere in the entire world, uh, but we're, we're curious to get your opinion on what you think of some of these. Plus, we'll do a couple of trivia, some fun stuff. Uh, it'll be fun. So hungry as fuck, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. I got the Napa Taylor, the Russian ball, like the fucking bench, man. And I hope that one day I'll just wake up with the passion and lust for this life is not blocked by the fears of thoughts in my mind. Something that falls out of their feet of me feeling is like... This is first world oh, yeah, hunger. Oh, yeah, get the hell out of that. Let's go. I kind of like that one, too. Kind of got like a melodic-y hip-hop vibe to it. Get there with that rhythm. Do you guys still like make... the bass tone. Are you guys still making music on the side, aside from doing recording and doing photography? Like, do you still jam all the time on the side? Any, like, solo stuff, maybe? I do. Nick? <laughs> I, I do. I've, I've been wor working for a lot of 
a lot of artists lately. So that's kind of taken over, but it's really fun because I get to work on all this different style, all these different styles and different genres and different bands. It's cool. Keeps me, keeps me busy. Cool. Interesting. That's good though. I play for fun. I, uh, I always bust out uh, the bass and the guitar. Like uh, I do like covers on logic just for fun. I don't ever share them or post them, but uh, yeah, why not? I, I always, I always play. You yeah. should let us, you should let us hear them, dude. Anymore. We, we want to hear them. We want to hear them. Honestly, like, yeah, I, I always like, uh, I always feel like the calling for music. I think that will always be there. It's just like, I don't know. Like I haven't actively pursued anything. It's just, I, just got other stuff going on but yeah it's always there for a bit and it comes back randomly it happens no, i'll be laying in bed and it'll be like one in the morning and i'll be like listening to music and i'll be like man like i really like this song like i'm gonna go try to cover it and then i'll like go in here <laughs> and just like make just like do like a quick cover of it it's it's kind of just for me i don't really like like i said i don't really share it with anybody but it's fun to do it's uh very like therapeutic in a way Maybe we'll get lucky someday and get a, a little compilation album or something of all, all the, the yeah. lost the lost Brian White tracks. <laughs> I'll do like I'll do like a cover album. I'll, I'll I'll title it like songs I wish I wrote or something like that. <laughs> Hell yeah. I can dig it. I can dig it for sure. Uh, all right, that's blue flames. What'd you think of blue flames? Oh, no. I can Sick. feel it. I'm i I'm down with it, man. Like let's go. Let's go. Alright, we'll put them in. We're gonna put them in then. <laughs> Featuring chaos. Hey, uh, quick, quick update. I just texted Joey. He said, "Fuck, I forgot. I'm up in Grass Valley cleaning up this house. Damn it." So I don't what? think he'll be joining us. No worries. It's okay. Does anyone has anyone talked was, to Corey? Corey was one, a, the only one I didn't get a response what from. An <laughs> I have not talked to Corey. I could text him. I haven't really talked to him. Last time I saw him, I ran into him at a grocery store. What'd you guys talk about when you ran into each other? That was. That was that was several weeks ago. So, what'd you talk about when you ran into each other? I don't know. Like, I kind of got flustered because I hadn't seen him in so long, and it, it brought back like a lot of good memories. And and I was just kind of it's totally caught off guard. And I was just like, oh, dude, like, holy shit, you actually like live like right down the street from me, and I haven't seen you in hell of years. And we just like caught up real quick. It was like a quick like minute exchange, but it was a little time to do it exactly but it was cool seeing him I, I even texted him afterwards i was like dude like sorry if i seemed all flustered but it was, <laughs> it was great seeing you and uh yeah i was looking forward to, to chatting it up with him today but apparently he's not joining in but no worries it's all good yeah it is it is a bummer but no okay, worries we have you guys so i've seen on facebook lately i think it was joey tagged everybody and was like want to get the guys back together to jam can we talk about that? Is there a possibility that maybe somehow you guys just meet at a rehearsal space and just practice? Let me say real quick to that point, it was crazy. I woke up and I had like a hundred friend requests <laughs> from that post. And I was just like, what is going on? And I looked and it was just like, oh, like we all need to get together and jam. And like, I'd like commented back. I was like, oh, it sounds like a dope time. Like, let's do it or something like that. And like, that got a shit ton of likes and I don't know, it kind of like lit a fire and like everyone was getting all stoked and it was just kind of cool to see like people's reactions like, oh, yeah, like it started a huge wave of like, you guys are responsible for a lot of the artists we have today. So it's like, you know, a lot of people would be hyped over that. So it, it is a possibility. Yeah, that's a cool compliment. I mean, think that's about cool. it. Like it was like a good time ago, like over, you know, it's been a good amount of years to where like the kids and people that listen to that have developed their own thing. So it's like, you know, you guys are one of the grandfathers of it. So we're like, you're going to get a hundred likes on that. It should have been more. <laughs> well, thank you. No <laughs> Granddads. Yeah. It is cool. Like, like uh, back. granddad rock. Granddad rock. Let's go. Like, okay. reflect, reflecting on that time, you know, like, uh, 2007, 2008, we were all, like, like kids straight out of high school, and, like, we had, like, big goals and big dreams, and, like, we were, like, releasing stuff, and people were really, like, digging it, and we could re really see something growing, you know, and, like, it was, it was cool to see, like, the connection that people had, and, like, as an adult, like, uh, in our 30s now, like, looking back, like, it, it's way bigger to me now than it was back then like i th i feel like back then it was 
it was cool and like don't get me wrong it was like badass to be like recognized and to be told how like awesome our music was and like it, we felt badass but like oh. now looking at it it's just like to be told like we were kind of like uh pioneers in that which i mean i don't really? necessarily like like it, it's cool like it, it's rad uh, it was it was a, it was a cool time, man. It was it was rad. I have a couple like a little like leg, little legacy. I have a couple production questions regarding she watched the sky. Uh, so Kit Walters was the was the producer. How much did he influence the sound yeah. on on how the EP came out versus the demos that you guys brought to him? Wow. Uh, now now I understand it even more now that uh, I kind of do a the similar role that he does as far as mixing and production and throwing these ideas in and i think he he was vital i think and uh he played a big role in in our sound um but i mean yeah man like with i I think about it i talk to kid all the time i even hit him up recently and was like dude i love you man like i listened to she watched the sky listened to wires and i was like I just appreciate you so much and everything you did for us. And you're always there for us. And I think he really like, he cared so much and he, he brought out the best in us. We had our songs written, but I feel like he was able to like, you know, bring them to life and put them together, I guess. People forget how much producers and engineers influence and like have an ability to like make or break an artist a lot of the times and they don't get enough recognition. Agreed. Yeah, he's he's the man. Um, I have so much so much love and respect for that guy. Okay, I have yeah, a. I feel like, like when when we were recording the EP at his house, like for me personally, like I don't feel like I understood really like the gravity of like what was actually happening, like in my opinion, like or like in my view, we were just we were there. We had these songs, like let's lay him down. But like Nick said, he he actually really had like such an influence on how everything came together. Cause I remember when we left, we, it wasn't necessarily finished. I remember Jordan stayed behind when we went home to finish up and we kind of went home with like these really raw tracks and we were like, listen to them. And I remember like, we weren't necessarily like completely satisfied, obviously, cause it wasn't, it wasn't done yet. But then I remember specifically one time where Nick, you came over to my house with these mixes that kit had done and we had listened to him on my computer like where he had like you know mixed and kind of got everything sounding really like really crisp was tragic hero and on we, board like, at this point where in the in the story oh that you, yeah yeah like, okay, okay oh yeah tragic was the one that brought us down to record the ep like we wouldn't have even been there recording with him if it wasn't for tragic at that point but I remember looking at Nick and like I was like getting tears in my eyes, like thinking Aww. like, wow. like no seriously, like it was like mind blowing, like hearing these mixes that he had done, that were like completely different than what we had had prior, and it was just like wow, like this is actually like something, yeah. like this is like something really good, and it it was it was really like it was like a powerful moment knowing like what we actually had. This is a. I have a, so I have that, two that fan cool. questions for you guys, if that's okay. Uh, oh the, yeah, they're coming in now. They're coming <laughs> in a lot now. Uh, one of them is: Is there any demos out there on the internet, or for she watched the sky that maybe have not been released? Maybe a track that didn't make the EP. Second part of the question is: Before Jordan left, is there anything that was demoed with him that ended up making wires? Brian, do you want to take? I, 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 I could answer the second part of that question for sure. Did do we have any? We do have some. Demos we do. She watched this guy. Yeah. And I actually, I actually Excellent. listen to them. Like every now and then, I'll pull them up. They're on YouTube. We have a couple tracks that are on. I think they're titled on YouTube like the demos or something like that, like the ASC demos. We have one song called Two Thirty Eight that we had recorded in Sacramento with. Um, our original drummer, Jerry Patterson, um, that we had never really released. I think we might have released it on like Pure Volume or MySpace back in the day. And then we had an alternate version of um, The Past of Love, The Memories, that was more like a straight up like uh, upbeat rock song rather than kind of like the slower kind of 
ballad vibe that uh, re- was released on um, the EP. And there's also a couple versions of Drown the City that were more demo versions. And they are out there. They just, um, the, the aforementioned songs didn't actually make the cut. Um, and then, like, we kind of redid a version of uh, Past Love the Memories. But, yeah, they're out there. They're just and hard then, to find. Um, they're just really hard to find. <laughs> I mean, you could just kind of type it in YouTube, like, uh, Skylight Drive demos, and it should it should maybe pop up if anyone's we'll interested in hearing those. Yeah, they're, they're out there for sure. And then the part two, Nick? Uh, part two. What was that? Uh... Repeat the question again. Uh, <laughs> what, what, uh, uh, somebody, what, uh, somebody was wondering if, if uh, <laughs> after she watched the sky was released, if there was any demos that Jordan was yeah. on that ended up being reworked for Jag uh, uh, for wires. But oh yeah, so we had we had the album recorded, like completely recorded and with Jordan. I cannot remember the exact timeline. Wait, this is with Jordan, Jordan though. Was on. Uh, see, I don't. There was no vocals, but we recorded it instrumentally completely, and I can't remember if Jordan did do. Di- I think he did do some demo stuff. Did he? I can't remember. He he had written for a couple songs, and we were even performing these live with Jordan. We okay, uh, we performed them, but we we hadn't had anything laid down from him at that point. No. Okay. Uh, Which so is so you're gonna have to find that those that turning, live footage to, to even memories hard. rip a <laughs> rip a MB3. No, I, I, I remember. I remember how it happened. We were on tour with Jordan at the time, and we had to drop off because of some like health concerns. If I'm remembering correctly, I'm not trying to speak for anybody. I'm just like kind of like remembering. Yeah. Like the history as I remember it, but we went to North Carolina. It was. It was Nick, myself, Joey, Corey, and Kyle. We all and Jordan went uh, to get to get taken care of, like medically or like, like I said, I don't really remember like specifics. It was so long ago, but we had recorded all the music at that point without Jordan, and then it was kind of like ready for him to do vocals, and then we had just never like got to that point. So like wires. Did he influence? Musically. Did he influence the the music portion of of the writing? Like, was he like, oh, you should do this here. I mean, this would be a cool part for I me mean, to do a singing spot. Like, did he influence any of that? I mean, yeah, he was always, like, super in- influential. Like, he, I remember him, like, singing over, like, some of the recordings at one point. Like, uh, or, like, when we were, like, writing the songs in the garage or whatever. Like, I'd say he was always, like, involved 100%. Like, um, I even remember some of the melodies he would sing over, like, the title track wires. Like, I remember, like, what he sang over the chorus. Like... It it was really good. Like, it it would be cool to like maybe like kind of hear what what he would have done because I remember like the the wheels were turning at a certain point. And, like he oh, was yeah. writing for this album. Like, and it was really good stuff. Is but you know like, it just it is what it is. Life exactly. Yep. <laughs> it is what it yeah. is. Uh, the amount of times I saw you guys at Sacramento Boardwalk still blows my mind. I've seen you guys way too many times playing Sweet. there. I and I, I have a quick note. I was actually in the too little too late video shoot that uh, you guys did at that warehouse back in the day, uh, where, where we're all jumping oh, up and down, is. and you and you, the director like duplicated all of us. I'm I'm in that video, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I remember that video, man. We were we went to like the the early hours of that one. We went to like four in the morning on that video. It was a long one, but it was it was totally worth it. it was fun and it came it out was great. Fun. Uh, one more question, then I want to go back to play a couple more songs for you guys to get some uh, some review opinions from you. Um, if you go to the Facebook for a Skylet Drive, it is completely dominated by signals. Is that cool with you guys? Is is that something that Jag did on his own? It's just weird to me. Like when I go there and it just dominate with signals instead of seeing your guys' faces all over the page. You know what I mean? Unless he bought the page. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. I, it's not something that I would do, but uh, I can't really, you know, stuff that I can't, I can't control or out of my hands. You know, there's nothing I can really do about it. So you guys it. didn't really ever handle the like media pages for that personally. 
I didn't I, no. Not well it, not not at not at the end, obviously. He had you know, he had the pages, so that was his choice. So that, that's what he chose Copy. to do. Copy. Ian in yeah. chat, by the way, says he has the YouTube video of Jordan performing wires. So we will be able yeah, to Yeah, there's one out there. I, I, I've seen it before. I, I, I've definitely seen it. Hell yeah. It was good, man. Jor yeah. Jordan killed it. Jordan did a good job on, on the track. Like, I remember I really liked what he had done. I, I still remember, like, the chorus that he did for that song. One more question. And we'll I'm not going to sing it for you. I would, I, would, I would love to, uh, to hear that. I can't remember it, but that would be cool. If I find need, the if I find the link, one. I'll I'll text it to you Nick, uh, afterwards. Uh, craziest okay. show Thank experience, you. whether it be a show that you guys played or a show that you attended, the most wild thing you've ever seen with your own eyes at a concert. What would it be? Oh man, that that's always a tough one. We I feel like we had so many so many wild wild experiences. I think one of the first wild experiences I could remember. I mean, this is this would go back. I it was after we recorded the EP and we played this uh, hometown show in Stockton. This isn't the craziest, but this just popped into my head as being like the first time I felt like, dude, are we doing something? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, we played this show in Stockton, and it's pretty much a hometown show. And it was at like this restaurant or something, and and it, they had this empty room and a little stage, and it was just packed, and people were singing the words. I mean, it was just unreal. I remember it right now, like I'm, it's coming back. I can see you getting goosebumps talking an about amazing it. Amazing feeling. <laughs> I remember looking over at the guys while we were playing, and I was like, "Dude, is this is this for real?" Like, you know. And I felt like that was the first moment where it was like such a cool feeling and something like I could recognize that people cared about what we were doing, you know, it, it was cool. And like, to your point, Nick, like always playing in like hometown, like Stockton, Lodi, like Galt, Sacramento, like the whole area where we're from and to see like, you know, not only our friends, but like our acquaintances, you know, people who we like recognize, but like, we're maybe not necessarily as close with like our upfront singing the songs like, I think that means more than just, like, a random stranger you've never seen before, like, singing the words, which is still really cool, and, like, it, you, like, it makes you feel great, but it's just, like, to be, like, kind of recognized by, like, our peers and, like, our friends, and, like, uh, not only recognized, but, like, really, like, people are, like, passionate about it, like, that really, like Nick said, that like, was a, a moment for us where I think we were like, man, we really have something here. And it was like, it's like really like, eye opening and really humbling and really cool. Hell yeah. Awesome. And it was, it, I remember that specifically being so badass because I mean, we just got out of like going to, we were jamming at Brian's house and we were in that, in that room writing the EP, you know, <laughs> and like we went from that, and every day, I mean, I feel like we would practice and write like every single day. You know, we were so, we loved what we did so much. We were like, we believed in it so hard. And I, I just remember that. Yeah, that show just. It was, it was like a drug. Really, man. Very good time. It was addicting. Like it was addicting at the time, like getting together and playing. And even if we just like literally played the same song 500 times in a row, like it was. And we, it and was, we would. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Do you guys want to do some trivia real quick? Yeah. Let's do a little move. Let's look do up an old live video I had when I played at the boardwalk because I'm pretty sure I opened f for Skylet Drive when Jag was singing and I don't remember you. Get How long were you guys like? When did you guys stop playing in the band exactly? I stopped in 2014, so seven years seven years ago. Definitely so it's been a minute. You guys, one time. Are you guys still close with 2015? Are you guys What still was your band? It was it was at the time it was called Ezra and we uh my buddy and I Johnny moved out to Sacramento and we joined up with them and we played one headliner show and then I remember we opened for you guys and then that was like the last time I was in that band. <laughs> Ezra, Ezra sounds familiar. 
It, it was it was because like I said we they played around a lot before we joined but like that was around the time you guys were like around there a lot so like it was just like around that time but we didn't ever hit it off like uh, you guys did so stayed under the radar. <laughs> I re- I remember I remember is that the band with uh, Ben? Yes, Ben Wilson because yeah. he's in a, another band yeah. right now. That's a good memory, dude. That's my boy. Hell yeah. Uh, it's, it's taking me back. I was trying to look up the video so I can remember what year, but it's like, that video's gone, too. Those are some older I, times. A little movie trivia real quick. My, <laughs> so technically, you guys would have been the list. first bigger band that I ever opened up for in my music career, if I'm thinking back, because that was definitely around the time that I was just getting my start doing like somewhat decent. So that's kind of crazy if I think about it. That's See, cool. influencers, guys. That's what you did. That's cool. That's dope, man. I think they demolished the boardwalk. It's sad. I don't think it's there anymore. Did, I thought it's still around. I asked them Is the it, other day. I'm in New York now. I haven't been there in forever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I thought that it, that they demolished it. There's somebody in chat that'll yeah. let us know. There's some... Uh, so I'm, in, I'm in Southern Cali. Sad. I'm not sure. That's that would be sad because that was such a stomping ground. Oh, dude. That was like where all of us got our start. Going to shows and playing shows was boardwalk. You guys Respect. and Dance Gap and Dance were like the one bands that I remember that would just like take over that whole entire venue. Yeah, we we had we yeah, had Kurt that place ruled. We had Kurt on a while back and uh he brought up like I wanna say it was like a Japan tour or something that you guys went on uh together and he if was that was that what he was talking about, Lloyd? Was that the right country? Uh I don't think anyway, it was Japan. We 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 did Europe with them. That was Europe, cool. Yeah. Okay, okay, maybe somewhere in Europe, but he was that talking. Was cool. Yeah, the boardwalk's still around. I guess they they must have remodeled it. Somebody in the chat said it's still there. I feel like he was talking about like a double decker bus, if I remember the story. Uh, he yeah, said he dude. said you guys partied on a double decker yeah, bus like that. really hard. Dude, that, bu- <laughs> that bus was so legit. Oh my god, I felt like a rock star in that bus, man. That bus was legit. Was Hell yeah! <laughs> a little movie trivia, real quick. There were so many of us on there. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> there was yeah. like fifty guys What's on up? that bus. Uh, so these <laughs> these are also randomly generated. Um, you're if you're an Eddie Murphy fan, you'll probably know this one. He used to be in a movie called Trading Places. If you guys get it first, you get the wheel spin. If chat beats you, they get the wheel spin. Uh, this, there's prizes and punishments and all kinds of stuff. But um, in the movie Trading Places, starring Eddie Murphy, what is Eddie Murphy's last name? In the movie, they say it over 500 times. I've never seen that movie. I've never seen it. That's either. a double error. I, mean, I, I don't remember it. Don't remember like I feel like I know so many movies. I can't believe it. You know, once I'm once you hear it, right once now. you hear it, if you've yeah, seen it, you'll you'll, you'll like know it, right away. Oh, I lucked out. I was about to have to pour you, yeah, Vegemite. You picked, you picked the right guy for this, dude. <laughs> I was about to put Vegemite in my beer, and that's never fun. Uh, radicals. They can be found at, well, just right here on YouTube. They're almost at 250. Hit the subscribe button just like I did if you like it. Radicals. It's not too bad. Kind of like post-grunge. I feel. That was shout out, shout out to the video production. That was that was a solid video. Like, the song was amazing, too, but the video, damn. That was, that was solid. Radicals are cool. Ooh, that's high praise because that's what you do, right? Yeah, that was, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, that 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 is like uh, that's some real deal stuff. We'll do one more and we'll get back in a couple questions and we'll let you gentlemen go. I know you're super busy. Wait, uh, wait, 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 real quick before you do that. What's this chug the beer thing? I feel oh, like so that's where I'll shine. Are you are you you're in you're in on this? Hold Dude, your I, I hold can your chug a beer faster than you can say chug a beer. Damn. We have. Do we have ourselves a challenge right here? Brian, sir, I challenge you right now. I just opened this beer. Do you have a let me go get a let me go get a glass, because that's the only way I can do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a glass too. Be right back. We got a challenge going down. Challenge going down. What'd you say, Nick? This is exciting. I would I still to this day brag about Brian's ability to chug a beer. I'm like no one can chug a beer faster than this guy. Damn. And I'm not even hyping him up. That's how much I believe this, dude. It's like I've you've never been around enough people drink it to out- know, right? <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. And no one can out chug this man. I don't have very many talents in this world, but chugging a beer is definitely one of them. I don't drink, so this is totally a BG game for you. So have fun. He drinks, but not very often. Yeah. Um, I couldn't find a glass, but I knew we had to keep it moving, so I just grabbed the, the best cup I could find real quick. 
and we're going. Yeah, you're about to get stomped into the ground. <laughs> I love this shit talking ahead of time. Hell yeah! All right, give me. Yeah, dude. Five seconds no for foam dead, reasons. <laughs> Someone, uh, one of my old uh, friends from the road, his name's Kyle, uh, tagged me in a video recently when we were on tour with Owl Santa. And when we were touring with them, there was a lot of beer drinking going on. And it showed one of my chugs. <laughs> and, I, like, I was I was blown away. Happy Friday, my, LBS fam. Chug. Love y'all. <laughs> my bad. We had a donation. Hey, who, what was that? Somebody so donated if us. somebody uh, gives a donation, it's a, it's a way to, like, you can, you know, text the text the chat kind of thing. Thank you, Nick. Nice. All right. Uh, so th so it's in so it's in the video you completely chugging. What is that IPA? This is a Modern Times Orderville Hazy IPA. Shout out! They are an awesome brewery. They make great beers. Sponsorship from, alert! Uh, San Diego. Sponsorship <laughs> alert! <laughs> oh, All right. You know you're from you, you live in San Diego. You must know. Come on. I have a red right, cup full of so Natty Light. IPA too. I'm having yeah, a Natty IPA Light. IPA Big difference, or, but. You call it, Brian, on three, two, one. You call it. You count, call it. Count it down whenever you're ready. Here we go. This is a treat for the internet. Here you go, internet. Three, Happy birthday. two, one, go. <laughs> you slaughtered me. You did slaughter me. Congrats. Well done, sir. Well done. That's what I'm known for. I'm sure my, uh, <laughs> I'm sure my wife's going to love that. He still got it. Guitar, vocals, and beer, beer, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love it. That's my a, wife told me, don't embarrass our family. I just, uh, we just had a son eight weeks ago. Like, congratulations. That's good. Thank you. He said, don't do anything that's going to embarrass him. And I think I just failed miserably. I, th I think he'd be very proud. He would be very proud. He's <laughs> cool. All right, we got one he, more. He, Wait, he, he chugged a beer with Brian White and got slaughtered. And I'm taking it to Real the grave. Real quick, I, before you hit play on that, I got a response from Joey. He says, laugh out loud, yeah, damn it. Sorry, bro. Been over over my head trying to sell this house. So he's trying to sell a house. We wish you, Joey. Life goes on. We hope he gets 200K over his asking price. <laughs> Hopefully 200K <laughs> over his asking price, bro. Good luck, Joey. We wish you could have been here, dude. Utah, Kansas is where they're from. They're called Atria. They can, can we be found. Them? Yes, no. Atria band U.S. is where they're, they're from. Dope. You like? Yo, the vocalists in that band slay. I mean, the whole thing was great, but man, those vocals, damn. Yeah, yeah when those high ones come in right there, whoo. No, it had some soul the, the to it. I, I was feeling it. From buddies, and sometimes we'll snap each other because when I hear them release songs like this, I'm like, yo, send me uh, you singing that without warming up, and we'll just send each other snaps. And us just trying to hit these like falsetto and high notes and just like bust each other up with that. He really does have an amazing voice. He's kicking ass. Yeah, that's some next level stuff for sure. That that that's there outside of the box for what, sure. What do you guys working? You could be one of the legendary DGD vocalists when they get their new one. <laughs> <laughs> time eventually, right? How many years has it been? No, nah, Tillian's working Tillian's out pretty damn well. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, what? Yo, can that 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 oh, short? No, I want to comment. I want to okay, comment okay. on Dance Gavin Dance real quick. Okay, like Ooh. they have been our friends since we started playing music, but like yeah. I am gen I am genuinely a fan of their band, and like we, we were friends with Tillian before he was in Dance Gavin. He was in Tides of Man, and like he he was our buddy and like our tour acquaintance, and like he was like our dude. And then he just joins this band, and I'm just like I'm like a little fanboy to Dance Gavin Dance now. Yeah. Like I feel like they're like so like above me. Like it would be cool if they like remembered me. Even though we did so many tours with them and like we were like on the road with them and we were like in the trenches with them, like I feel like it would be so cool if they like remembered me just because like I'm such a little fanboy. Like they <laughs> are amazing. They are amazing. I we'll love their music. Never get them on the show, man. So <laughs> please, so, like let let me be that fan caller. Like I'll call in. To speaking talk to of them, like, Dance dude, Gavin, like, at, at one time you guys played a couple of shows with Johnny. What what was that like? Yeah badass that was fun <laughs> yeah, yeah i remember we had a blast uh yeah he was our boy that was a good time 
and he would free he he would freestyle like he would learn whatever like whatever he could <laughs> and he literally we would go on stage and he would just freestyle every song and it was so sick <laughs> hell yeah dude, I mean, would, I was dude like, let, what the hell how is let me piggyback off what nick just said like he just nailed it a hundred percent johnny just kind of went on stage with us and just sang without any prep like we were like drinking beers in the van and then like we're like all right let's go play a show and like he would just go on stage and start singing and it was like so good and people would come up to us after our set and be like oh my god that was amazing it was like such an amazing set and we were just like thanks dude like cool <laughs> so, that off for sure. so comparing no, it, it was it was truly like it was like a lightning in a bottle thing like he just like just nailed it and it was just it didn't make any sense but it worked it was so cool to compare dude, that I'm, experience I'm laughing, like just oh my god i'm just thinking about I'm thinking about those shows right now it was so fucking funny dude <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you also you also yeah, had Craig like, you also had Craig Mabbitt for a little bit uh, also I believe and I yeah. think they played a show together as both your vocalists uh, what was it like working with Craig and how did the decision come about where neither one was the choice and Jag was the right answer I feel like both of them were the choice it just didn't work out at the time like, uh, cause I remember Craig and Johnny were singing with us on the same tour on, at the same shows. Like they would both come on stage cause it was right after we lost Jordan that, um, they were like kind of filling in for us. Like we were on a tour and we wanted to keep going. Jordan was gone and they were kind of stepping up. Um, I remember awesome. it didn't, it didn't work out with Johnny because he had like some prior contracts with rise records and like they, they kind of had him set up for some stuff, but there's like a funny story with uh, Craig Mabbitt where he was hitting up um, Joey who he thought was our Joey, but turned out to be the rep for escape the fate at the time. Joey Simran, who Ooh. later became so there was like a lot of confusion but it turns out like it kind of opened up some doors for him to join up with escape the fate during that time so if i remember correctly and like forgive me because it was so long ago um like the idea was to get uh johnny craig or craig mabbitt to join but like things just didn't necessarily work out so then we kind of went on our own little hunt for like our own singer, which led to Jag joining the band later on. But those two names, yes, they were definitely like in our minds, like possible, like you know, singers for the for the group. But I mean, like again, life. Life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we have one more fan question coming in from Ian. Uh, was Adelphia truly written in one month and recorded in one month? And how do you feel about that record? And what's your favorite song that you're most proud of from it? Damn, multi, sweet. multi question. Nick, <laughs> Nick, take Nick. the take the lead on this one. I think I can't remember at the time how how long it took to write the record, but we may have. I think we we had a practice space. We wrote it in a couple weeks or something. A few weeks, got in the studio. And recorded it like any other, but yeah, it's probably about a month. I'd say that sounds accurate. And my favorite track, I think he asked that. I would say yeah. is Eva the Carrier. I I, I dig that one. That, and that was a blast to play live. That was fun. And recording that was fun. We recorded at a cool studio in Seattle. Th these memories are just coming back to me. Sorry if I get. No, go you guys off. are. No, we, this is what this is what but we that, want. We so. love this. That was a fun one. Yeah. And I remember we were, uh, we like lived in the studio and we were all just, we were hanging out, drinking beers, recording. And uh, I think, yeah, it took about a month. I would say that's accurate. Yeah. I remember it too. Like Nick's, Nick's representing it pretty well. Um, I remember there was a lot of pressure because we had just signed to Fearless Records. There was a lot of pressure to get an album done in, uh, in time for Warp Tour, which was coming up. Um, in june so we got a practice space in sac and we we went there quite a bit like we were there several times a week 
and we were like pumping out this record and I remember it all happening really fast and listening back to that on that album and like uh like there's some songs like I'd like truly really love but there's like I remember like a lot of it did kind of feel like a tad rushed I feel like everyone in the band would agree to that but at the time I think we felt really confident um like knocking this out and like keep in mind we were like rolling on the high of wires like the success of wires so like we really like wanted to capitalize on that and like we had a lot of momentum going so like we were like going there like several times a week pumping out these songs we had like management and label on our asses like all right guys like you're making this this album you're making these songs and then we went down to seattle and like like nick said like this place kicked ass we were with uh Casey Bates, who was an awesome producer, and like um, we we're living in like with like six guys in this like one tiny room with like a bunch of bunk beds and like hell yeah, just, it was just drinking. Right. Yeah, it was cool. And like we like just pumped out, dude, we just pumped out all these songs, and like it was it was a good time. Adelphia was fun. Like like reflecting on it, like there was probably a lot of things that a lot of us would have done differently. But like like I said, like we were like young hungry moving fast like everything was just yep. moving so fast at that point like we just had to get this album out and like it was cool i i still love that record i listen to it every now and then and I, I, that was probably my favorite in terms of like bass playing that i've ever done like i was able to like be like experimental in, in like that sense and um i remember the dude we were working with like the engineer his name was jared he was just like a super cool guy and like i i loved working with him um Man, it's just like a lifetime ago. It's, it's <laughs> crazy to reflect on it. It was it's good so, memories, yeah, though. No, good it's memories. Such a fun time. Yeah, Brian put that put that pretty well. About uh, I now it's kind of coming back to me that there was I felt I did feel like a pressure at the time, right? Like we were kind of like it was real quick and like things were like on this timeline. And I think there was a pressure that we felt. I think that we hadn't before because of the success of Wires. Not that it was bad or anything like that, but I remember feeling like, oh man, we got to do this. We got, and it was just so fast. And I remember leaving like, man, we just recorded our next record. Okay, you know that that's it. And then you on to the know. next tour. And yeah, I do remember. If you talk, if you talk, if you talk about kind of like uh, like what you would have done differently, I think if 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 we would have had another like month to work on that album, if they would have like allowed us like one more month to really like tighten the screws and really hone everything in it, it would have been a lot more like successful in a sense because that is probably like our least popular album in terms of like fans and like what they thought was like our best work um i wish that there wasn't all those pressures to get it done so quick that we could have spent a little bit more time i it's the I don't hungry people forget about this, you know, they just want to keep pushing you and putting you out there and they forget you really can't rush music at all. You can't mass produce it like the best I, stuff take time. Totally. And I agree. But I'm not going to say I'm not proud of it. Like, especially like like Nick and Joey, like the the music I thought was amazing. Like Corey killed it on drums. I feel like Kyle really brought out a lot of great keys and stuff. Like I said earlier, like that was probably like my best bass work. But like um, like in terms of songwriting and structure, I felt like we were just kind of like really like, I don't know. I don't want to say like we were all over the place, but like I remember when we would get mixes back, we, we sent it into someone to mix it and they would send us something back where they completely chopped up our song and like rearranged it. And we were all just like, what? Like, why what? would they do that? That doesn't make any sense. Like they completely like changed everything we did and we were like totally against it. And like, I remember it was it was a little messy, like mm, the whole yeah. the whole process was a little messy. But I mean, am I proud of the album? Yes, like I love that album. Like that that album means a lot to me, and I'm sure it does to everyone else. But it was just it probably wasn't like the whole process wasn't as clean as it pro probably could have been. I mean, it, like yeah. I said, another I, month, another month, like we would have been good. What? One other thing, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Another thing I'm thinking about too is when we did have that rehearsal space, we didn't demo anything at all. Like that, 
and that's that album is kind of all over and it, it it's it's messy and it's very jammy like you know and we're kind of very experimental and like weird structures and stuff but we literally just jammed in that rehearsal space kind of wrote together live and then recorded it we never heard it never ne- never had any demos it was just in our heads really of that's how we crazy. were jamming it it yeah, wasn't it, until now that i look back yeah sorry go ahead dude I was gonna say it, was until saying. I. <laughs> he said, "Go ahead and then." <laughs> Never mind. I, I guess sorry, I'm. Just... <laughs> I, I don't want to steamroll. I'm sorry. My bad. Um, I can't even. I can't even remember where I was going. But. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it was just wild how it was like. You know, we were just jamming, and to think about six of us. You know how, however, we're interpreting the song maybe somewhat different. Somehow we still like recorded what we were jamming in that room, which is kind of wild. So, yeah, even though it it was pretty wild and messy, but I can think back and be like, that was quite an experience. And I think we were learning a lot still too, lear- learning how this whole process even works. Because before, I think we did have a lot of time where we were kind of demoing things and you know, riding together and hanging out. And that was a real quick process and something we weren't used to, I would I would say. Hell yeah. I like that. Fellas, I got one final question for you and then we'll let you go. We appreciate you spending uh, more time than I, I asked for 30 minutes. You've given us 50 minutes, so we really appreciate it. Uh, my final question Bro, is... Bro, I, I could go for another hour, man. This okay, is cool. cool. Man. You don't have to go anywhere. If you don't have to go anywhere, then you can kick it. We love this. Uh, my, my last question is, I just want to know if you could only pick one song from your entire catalog that you're most proud oh, of. Shit. I know that's hard, but if is there one particular record that just means a little bit more something to you than, than the others? Mm. And it could be one that's yeah, maybe, that's, that you know... Hard. At the end of the album, the like just come one that is just in a minute, man. <laughs> I I think I do have a, pers- a personal song, and I don't know. It's just something that it means a lot to me. I do love our our track "Hey Nightmare." I that song mm. really means a lot to me, and I I just feel like I remember writing that song and just being so stoked on it, and I love playing it live. I love the reaction. I even listened to it today, and I, it just Same. brings back like really good memories. Shout out uh, to my boy Nick Miller. <laughs> I think that's I think that's coming in from Jeff. I don't have the notification stuff on. It is coming from Jeff of of said it. He wants to say what's up. My boy, what up, Jeff? I still practice uh, to that damn song, dude. If I'm trying to warm up or I'm trying to practice singers, I will still sing to that song to this day. That rules, man. Yeah, that that one just brings back good memories. Go ahead, Brian. I'm going to chime in with Nick. Like, I completely agree. That song, um, I remember, like, where even the name for that song was, like, cultivated from. It was from uh, the Soul Calibur series. There was a a fighter named Nightmare. And I remember Jordan really liked liked that game, and he, uh, he pulled Nightmare from the game and... I, I just remember that time, like, I remember that time, like, where we were all at, like, what we were all doing, and, like, kind of, like, where it all started from. I remember writing that song, too, like, it was right before this, like, battle of the bands that we did in Lodi, like, we needed, like, another song to play <laughs> at this battle of the bands that we ended up winning, which Hell essentially, yeah. we, it funded our trip to North Carolina to record our EP, like it all just kind of fell into place. Like I remember writing that song. I remember like where we were all at, and like I remember like just the, the kind of attitude all of us had, and we were all just like so young and dumb, and just like just playing music. And I remember it all coming together. I remember Jordan saying, "All right," and at this part, Brian, you're gonna scream, you're <laughs> gonna scream, "Cheese," and I'm gonna do the next line, and then watching the sky burn. <laughs> Like I remember all of that. Like, oh like, yeah, it was yesterday. Really cool. No, it was, it, and that song turned out to be like one of our most popular songs, and just it's so cool how they originate, like in like the intention behind the song and like where it actually ends up going. Like, it's so cool to like reflect and think about that. So yeah. yes, I agree. Like, hey, nightmare would definitely be like the song that I feel like 
means the most. Definitely. Well, we hope and pray that somehow that Facebook post that you guys made where everybody was tagged can somehow come true and you find yourself in a rehearsal space talking about She Watches Sky Part Everyone 2. start sharing it more. <laughs> Keep it going. Don't let it die out. We'll call, we'll call up Kit. We'll say, 20, Kit, get the, get the studio ready. 2022 is the 15-year anniversary of oh. that album. So it would be an oh, excellent shit. time to maybe, you know, hey, boys, what you doing? Let's all meet up somewhere 15. and... Uh, Pound some beers. 15 is a solid number. It's a very solid I number. Wanna, I want to say, too, I want to say uh, I appreciate, no matter what, I really appreciate so much, like, every, everyone that, you know, cares about us and that has, you know, told us how much they support us. And, and it just means the world. Like, even a reaction to anything or people that say our music means something to them or, you know, she watched the sky what it meant to him and all, all of our albums, but uh, it just means a lot. It's so cool that people care. Oh, I bet you BG so. and I could probably recite a majority of those songs to you. We're just not For real. <laughs> Especially <laughs> Columbus always thought was just a fantastic some... outro to it. It's, it's so good. So good. It's a classic. I do. Thank, I do second one. What, what Nick said, like straight up, like it honestly like makes me feel cool. Like it makes me feel like I like did something cool with my life. You guys at really some point. did though. It's crazy to like that you guys don't think that cause just because of how many people listen to that, and then you listen to like vocalists nowadays and just how people write certain things. Like you can see a lot of similarities between that and stuff. So it's like you guys definitely did like pay the, a, a path for people. So start Thank start realizing you. that. You know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It is very humbling. It's Thanks, it's man. very cool. Fifteen year anniversary of She Watch the Sky is next year. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed for some uh, surprises. <laughs> if you have any news that you need to tell the world, come next year regarding the fifteen year anniversary. This is an excellent place to drop it. I'm just saying. But uh, gentlemen, if if you want to hang out with us longer, you're absolutely more than welcome to. If, if you have stuff to do, I would say probably this is the point where we would say goodbye. But if not, please feel free to kick it for, with us a lot longer and we'll review uh, a bunch more bands. I do I do have a baby that needs me, so I'm probably going to dip out. But thank you guys so much for having me, and I, I really appreciate it. And this was so cool. Nick, it was so good seeing you, buddy. I hope we can get together soon and like, like hang out. Like That would be awesome. I miss you a lot, man, Like more than you probably know. Miss, so. you, too. If, miss you too, dude. We have to, man. Please Thank do. We hope we hope you guys get All together right, soon, man. Cheers, Brian. Th cheers, Nick. Thank I, you guys so much. Again, thank you guys so much. Have a great night. I'll see you guys soon. Okay. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on my beer chugs between now and next time we talk. By the way, and I, and I re challenge you again, in in the future. <laughs> cheers, fellas. Bye, guys. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. Hell yeah. Bye.